Okay, so we're talking about z-scores, and I hope that um, you're convinced that when we're trying to assess the meaning of numbers, the numbers themselves don't tell us much. Um, if we compare the number to the mean, that tells us a little bit more about where the number is relative to the rest of the distribution. And then the final piece is uh, taking into consideration the variability of the rest of the, the distribution as well. And that tells us something about you know, whether we're above or below the mean or at the mean and by how many standard deviations. So the z-score tells us how many standard deviations away from the mean a score is. All right. Um, and z-scores are also uh, known as standard scores or normal scores, normalized scores or standard scores, um, because precisely because they take into account that other, uh, the population uh, parameters, the mean and the standard deviation, to give us a notion of, of where we're at. And I want to I do another example of the power of z-scores because what we can do with z-scores is compare uh, what some people will say, compare apples and oranges. Um, of course, I've always had a problem with that analogy because I think apples and oranges are quite similar. They're both round, they both grow on trees, they're both fruit, they're both sweet, they both have skin on the outside and seeds on the inside and so on and so forth. Um, I usually tell my classes this is like comparing aardvarks and airplanes because I think that that comparison, uh, those two things are quite a bit more disparate than apples and oranges. But anyway, I digress, okay? Um, let's do this example as a means to illustrate how using z-scores can sort of bring us onto the same page and we're able to compare things uh, that, that might first appear to be quite disparate. Um, I'm assuming that most of you would agree that through your school experiences that you know that some courses are more difficult than other courses. This course, for example, the stats course, is uh, traditionally students perceive it as more difficult than, uh, than other courses. I'm assuming that you would agree that some majors, uh, college majors, uh, might be perceived as easier than other majors, right? You're probably nodding your head. Uh, some teachers are considered easier than other teachers. Uh, and some universities are uh, considered more difficult than other universities. But here's a, a very interesting thing that we do in academics is we sort of use the GPA as the indicator of, you know, where you're at, uh, how well you've performed, um, and that goes across all classes, all professors, all majors. And in fact, uh, there's, for, for most every college and university, we use the Latin honors system, right, like magna cum laude, summa cum laude, cum laude, uh, upon graduation, and that's based on your GPA. But it's not based on your GPA and you're a psych major, or your GPA and you're a math major, or your GPA and you're an art history major, and so on and so forth. Um, it's just your GPA. And so I'm sure that some of you have taken a class, maybe the professor's really tough, and you got to be in the class, and someone else is boasting about their A, and you're like, yeah, well, but Professor so-and-so is really easy. I got a B in Professor X's class, and that means more than an A, right? I hope you understand what I'm talking about. Um, but that's problematic because the person who gets an A in a really easy class, um, perhaps it will have a higher GPA than someone who gets a C in a really tough class. Um, and so, you know, is there a way that we can sort of equate these things based on the difficulty, uh, you know, the toughness of the course or the professor? And the answer is absolutely there's a way, and it's called z-scores, okay? 
Let me give you an example. And I'm just going to pick kind of a you know funny example, perhaps a little bit stereotypical. Um, I'm not, I not only teach statistics, but I'm also an artist uh, as well. So I have respect for all majors and all disciplines. But uh, let's let's do this example. Suppose we have two roommates, okay, and one of them is a basket weaving major, okay. I mean, I'm not going to pick a major at our institution, uh, you know, compare majors. That just wouldn't be fair. So we'll just say basket weaving. And the other roommate is an astrophysics major. And here what I'm trying to do is sort of choose two majors that might represent what stereotypically would be a very difficult major, you know, calculus one, calculus two, calculus three, and physics, and so on and so forth. And then basket weaving is maybe a, uh, an example of what might be uh, an easy major. I'm trying to be careful here, okay? So the basket weaving major comes back to the dorm, and... Uh, uh, she's really excited because um, she said, hey, I got my first test back and uh, I got a 93 on the exam, 93%. It's like, wow, that, you know, I got an A, I got an A on the exam. And the astrophysicist says, okay, that, well, that's cool. Uh, you know, congratulations. And the basket weaver says, yeah, we should go out and have a drink. You know, uh, I'm buying a beer because I'm really happy about that. And the astrophysicist says, yeah, yeah, that'd be great because we got our first exam back too. And in fact, um, I did pretty well. Uh, I got a, I got a 51% on the exam. And the basket weaver says, oh my God, you failed your first exam. And the astrophysicist physicist says, no, 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 that was a really good score. And the basket weaver's like, well, that's an F of 51%, right? I think you're suspecting that I'm going to be talking about what I talked about in the last video, okay? But sort of now we're comparing between two people, right? And the astrophysicist said, well, um, she said the mean for the exam, the mean for the exam was a 42%. And the basket weaver says, oh, my God, the mean, the average for, the, for your class was an F. And the astrophysicist says, no, 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 the, the mean was a C. I mean, this is the average. And the basket weaver says, a 42 is not a C, a 42 is an F. Okay, what I'm trying to get you guys to think about, you know, don't be like the basket weaver, okay? And the astrophysicist says... <laughs> Well, what was the average for your class on the basket weaving? And the basket weaver says, well, that's the thing. Uh, the whole class did pretty well. The average for our class was a 90. And so the astrophysicist says, well, okay. I mean, you did above average, but if the average is 90, then the average isn't an A. The average is a C, and so 90 would be a C. Well, the basket weaver is having a tough time with this uh, because, you know, she was all excited, and now her roommate, she's like saying, I don't know, you know, you did better than average, but, you know, we'll see. So here's the problem. I mean, how do we compare these two, right? It's like comparing apples and oranges, or as I like to say, it's like comparing aardvarks and airplanes. It's a different test. It's a different mean on the two tests, uh, different averages. Uh, both of these folks scored above average, um, but it's very difficult to compare these. Well, here's what we're going to do. We're going to look at the position of these two in the curve. Now, both of these folks are above the average, okay? Both are above the average, we know that. We can get that by 
um, comparing the score to the mean, right? X minus mu, right? So we so that's how you compare a score to the mean. It's a, it's subtraction. That's the comparison function in math. Okay, so we can do that, but in order to and I mean let's do that, right? So x minus mu in this case is three. Okay, ninety three minus ninety. X minus mu in this case is 51 minus uh, 42, which is 9, okay? <clears throat> and you might say, well, 9 points above the mean, 3 points above the mean. But don't forget, we really should put that in terms of, this tells us the average score for the distribution. What we really need to do is talk about the average variability or how spread out uh, the values are uh, from this mean of 42, right? How spread out are the numbers relative to this mean of 90, okay? So the astrophysicist says, well, the standard deviation for this distribution here, the standard deviation was, uh, let's say, um, 10, okay? And over here, let's say the standard deviation was, uh, let's say, um, 5, okay? Again, I'm just making these numbers up. Now we have all sorts of, um, we have all sorts of variables changing, and it's very difficult to compare these when you're looking at all these numbers, but what we're going to do is we're going to transform the performances here into z-scores. When we do that, and that's the reason that these are called standard scores or normalized scores, is that it takes into consideration the score, the mean for the group, the standard deviation for the group. Remember our z-score formula, okay? We're going to take the score compare it to the mean, and then compare the deviation to the average deviation, okay? This is like a double comparison, okay? It's a double comparison in a way. We're comparing the score to the average. That gives us our deviation. Then we're going to compare the deviation to the average deviation. Score to the average and then deviation to the average deviation, okay? Let's do that for both of these group, for both of these uh, students. And what we have here is three over five. So this is a z-score of plus six, okay? Should we check that on our calculator just to make sure? Three divided by six, excuse me, 3 divided by 5 equals 0.6, okay? So there's the z-score for the basket weaver. Over here, we have a deviation of 9 compared to an average deviation of 10, and so that comes out to be 0 0.90, a positive, above the mean. And when we do this, what we can do is directly compare the z-scores. So z-score for the basket weaver, they're 0.6 standard deviations above the mean. Z-score for the astrophysicist, 0.9 standard deviations above the mean. And so in this case, the astrophysicist, she actually did better relative to the class. Okay, so her position relative to the other astrophysicists is uh, further uh, beyond the mean in terms, of in terms of how other people varied than the, bas than the basket weaver. So the astrophysicist says, you know, actually I did better in my distribution compared to you. And the astrophysicist wasn't too happy about this discussion to begin with, and she's like, what are you talking about? I got an A, and you got an F. 
you guys are now sophisticated enough to know that that's not the correct assessment, right? Um, that 51 is not an F. If it's above average, it certainly can't be an F, okay? Is this an A or not? Well, if the rest of the class is performing as high, you know, almost as high as you, I'm not sure I'd consider that an A, okay? Um, when we take into consideration the standard deviations, now we can actually compare this. This, this tells us a location in the distribution in terms of standard deviations, okay? So, um, let me, okay, let me do this. I just want to show you what's happening here in terms of curve-wise. Okay, so here's the mean, and there's some standard deviation. And the basket weaver is about a little more than a half a standard deviation away. Over here, the physicist is almost one standard deviation away from the mean. Okay? And so, in fact, these numbers will tell you where in the curve you are, how many standard deviations above or below the mean you are. So the astrophysicist is like, you know, I really did better than you if we're talking about this relative grading, okay? And in fact, what z-scores do is allow us to compare easy majors to harder majors, harder professors to easier professors, um, you know, an easy class relative to a hard class. And by the way, this is the kind of stuff, if you're thinking about going to graduate school, sometimes students will take the easiest courses with the easiest professors they can to get their GPA up without knowing that graduate people in graduate school know what's going on. And so if you get an A in statistics, let's say, or if you get an A in anatomy and physiology, or if you get an A in calculus too, that means more than if you get an A in basket weaving, okay? And so, and this would, if we use this system, then we could, instead of GPA, then we're equating all of the difficulties across courses, across majors, across professors. I think it's the fairest way to do grading because you're being graded relative to other people, right? You're being graded relative to other people. And that's how you're going to be judged when you apply for a job, when you apply for graduate school. Uh, in your job performance, uh, you're going to be compared to other people. Okay. By the way, <clears throat> the basket weaver is now really pissed off at her roommate and decides you're not going to get a beer. And the basket weaver was making a basket for her roommate for Christmas, uh, you know, for the holidays. And lo and behold, she's thinking twice about that. Well, of course, the basket weaver doesn't know anything about z-scores. Um, you know, you guys are sophisticated now. You know that z what z-scores mean. You know what they do for us in terms of evaluating numbers, eva evaluating performance. So the astrophysicist says, you know, I know you don't know much about z-scores, but let's do this. Suppose that we took the same exam, and the basket weaver's like, yeah, but we didn't take the same exam. The astrophysicist says, listen, just stay with me here, okay? What we're going to do is we're going to put these performances, because it's very difficult to sort of compare the aardvarks and airplanes, right? The astrophysicist, uh, parameters of that exam to the parameters of the basket weaver. So the, the astrophysicist says, listen, here's what we're going to do. Suppose we had a common curve that we took the same exam and the basket weaver's like, but we didn't. And of course the astrophysicist says, but hypothetically, suppose we took the same exam especially because an average on an exam of 90 is not very realistic. An average on an exam of 
what was it, 42? Not very realistic. So the astrophysicist says, let's think about a more, you know, typical curve where the mean is 72. And I'm just making that up. Just making that up right now. The mean is 72, and let's say the standard deviation is 10. You know, that might be sort of a more, much more typical kind of a distribution for an exam score, something that you're more, more comfortable with, right? When the average is 70 or 75 or something like that, standard deviation of 10, whatever. Now what we're going to do, the astrophysicist is saying, if, we, if the distribution of both of our classes was like this, okay, then my z-score would look like what? Well, let's put the z-score formula up again, okay? Put the z-score formula up again. This is our tool. You can always go to your toolbox and pick out that tool if you need to use it, okay? So I have a z-score of 0.9 for my astrophysicist. And let me put this down a little bit. Z-score of 0.9. What would a score look like if the average on the exam was a 72 and the standard deviation was a 10? Everybody with me here? What I want to do is I want to put this z-score, because this tells us a position, okay? But I'm going to position it on this curve, okay? I'm going to take this z-score and position it on here. Well, how do I do that? 0.9 for the z-score. Put in my other two variables. Okay, and let's see how this works. So if I solve for x here, it turns out to be an x of 81. Okay. So let me, I'm going to say this slowly here. The way the astrophysicist performed on her exam would be like getting an 81 on this distribution, okay? It's above average, and it's above average by one standard deviation. Uh, excuse me, 0.9 standard deviations. So here we have an 81. Let's take the basket weaver, put the basket weaver on this common curve, okay? And what we have here then is 0 0.60 is equal to x minus 72, divided by 10. Okay? So what would this look like on this made-up curve? Okay? And in fact, here we go for the astro, or excuse me, for the basket weaver, we would have a score of 78. Okay? Now, I'll say again, 93 that's the basket weaver's original score, 93 on a distribution where the average was a 90 and the standard deviation was 5. That was the basket weaver's original. That gave us this position. 93 on a distribution with a mean of 90 and a standard deviation of 5 is the same thing as a 78 on a distribution where the mean is 72 and the standard deviation is 10, okay? So we're converting this position to this curve. We're converting this position to this curve so that now we can compare the basket weaver to the astrophysicist. And in fact, the astrophysicist was correct. They performed better than the basket weaver, okay? Now, if you, if you understand z-scores, then you know that you can just compare these two, right? These are directly comparable. They are directly comparable. But, of course, the basket weaver doesn't understand that. And so the astrophysicist is just trying to say, okay, what this means is that if we took the same exam, this is where we would end up. Okay? Um, so the astrophysicist did better. Now, 
if I was king of the world, if I was running a college, all grades would be given in z-scores because they can all be compared one to another. Doesn't matter what your major is, we can compare these one to another. Doesn't matter what professor you have, you compare one to another and so on and so forth, okay? When I went to uh, college many years ago, my freshman year, uh, I had a professor that only gave scores in z-scores. Of course, we didn't know what the hell was going on. I'm sure he took a half a class period to explain it, but this took us a while to develop, right? You can't explain this in one uh, uh, class session. But he would only give us our grades and z-scores. Well, I didn't know what the hell that meant. I know that you wanted a positive z-score. That meant you were above average. Um, if you had a negative z-score, you were below average. Of course, if you had a z-score of zero, because let's remind ourselves, z-score tells you how many standard deviations away from the mean you are. Okay, So if I have a z-score of zero, that means I'm at the mean. Z-score negative, below the mean. Z-score positive, above the mean. And of course, everybody knew that the higher your Z-score was, the better you did. Anyway, the whole semester, that's how we gave us our grades, and that's the only way we had our grades. Uh, if I did that nowadays, people would flip out, I think. Okay, let's do another example of this. Um, and... Um, Again, we'll, we'll, it'll be like comparing aardvarks and airplanes. So sometimes, I'm not a big sports fan, but I watch golf. I know people tease me sometimes about that, but I like golf. I'm a golfer, and uh, so I watch it. And... Um, Sports in, and I watch college basketball. Those are my two sports that I watch. Um, and oftentimes I'm listening to um, sportscasters, and they're talking about, oh, how can you compare, you know, Sammy Sosa to Babe Ruth, and uh, um, what's the what's some other baseball players, contemporary baseball players to older baseball players, you know, from the old era in terms of home runs for golf. I mean, in the old days, they had hickory sticks and feather balls, and it's like you, if you had a 100-yard drive, that was a big drive. Nowadays, golfers are, are you know, hitting at 300 yards. And how do you compare, you know, historical figures in sports to contemporary people in sports? And then, uh, you know, God forbid we try to um, compare across sports, right? But, I mean, it's done – you know, ESPN gives out an award for the sports person of the year. And they may look at, you know, cross-country skiing and um, track and basketball and golf and bowling, I suppose, right? I mean, how do you compare things that are so apparently different? Well, I'm going to suggest to you that it's not that different from comparing someone who's in astrophysics to someone who's in basket weaving. I mean, how did we compare those? Well, it was Z-scores, okay? And I hear these sportscasters complaining about this and saying, oh, it can't possibly be done. And I'm like, ah, uh, I'm like my students in, uh, you know, my stats class, Psych 211, Soch 211, they could do it. How can you guys not do it? And they're getting paid a lot of money. Um, so I'll show you how to do that, okay? Let's do, um, well, let's do this. Let's do a golfer. And I'm going to do Tiger Woods. He's back to golfing well again, sort of. Okay. So we're going to look at Tiger Woods. And um, then let's compare Tiger Woods to, uh, uh, let's do this, LeBron James. Okay. Tiger Woods to LeBron James. So here we have golf. And here we have basketball. I'm like, well, who's, who's better? Right? I'm evaluating, I'm assessing performance. Same thing we've been doing. Uh, who's better, LeBron James or Tiger Woods? Now, I'm not talking about personality here, folks. I'm talking about the better athlete. And I'm not going to make Tiger Woods 
play basketball, and I'm not going to make LeBron James play golf. Okay? What I want to do, what I'm saying here is, how well is Tiger Woods at his game, just like the basket weaver, right? How well did the basket weaver do in the basket weaving class? And I'm going to say, how well is LeBron James doing in basketball? That is, how good is the astrophysicist doing in the astrophysics class? So here we go. Let's do this. Um, and we'll put up some curves here, okay, just so you can see it a little better. Now, the fun part is deciding what variable you want to use to sort of assess, you know, how good is Tiger Woods? Do we want to use the amount of money? that he earns in tournaments? Do we want to use um, score? Do we want to use the number of tournaments he wins? Of course, all sports now are getting into sort of this microanalysis of statistics, right? In golf, we could talk about sand saves and putting and greens and regulation and driving distance and all of this stuff, right? Likewise, when we're talking about LeBron James, we say, well, how good is LeBron James in the NBA, right? This is the NBA distribution. This is the PGA, the Professional Golfers Association. This, this is the National Basketball Association. And again, with the, the fun part, I think, is to you know try to figure out what variable you're going to use for, for basketball. You could use points scored, or you can use games won, or you can use minutes played. Or you can do assists, or you can do rebounds, and all that stuff, right? So that's the fun part. But then once we decide on a variable, okay, then we do the statistics, okay? So let's do this. Let's say that the average, we'll do uh, scores, uh, your golf score when you're in a tournament playing, okay? Let's say the average is... Let's say the average is uh, 72.50. So this is for Tiger Woods' um, peers on the PGA, this is their average during a tournament. Of course, there's standard deviation. Not everybody shoots this. This tells us how variable the scores are, how spread out they are. So let's say that... Um, the standard deviation here is, I don't know what it would be, 4.20. Okay. Now for golf, and I use this example purposefully, not to confuse people, but to make sure that you are able to deal with a little bit of complexity. In golf, of course, lower your score the better you are. In golf, the lower the score, the better you are, right? It's it's not like some other sports, but there, there are others like that. So let's say here's Tiger Woods down here, and let's say that his average when he's in a tournament is, um, let's say, 69.15. Okay? That's his average. I don't know if that's correct or not. Okay, so we can certainly get a z-score for Tiger Woods. Let's just plug in the numbers here. So it's 69.15 minus 72.50 divided by 4.20. Okay, I'll get my handy-dandy calculator here. Uh, 69.15 minus... 72.5 equals 3.35 divided by 4.2 equals. So Tiger Woods here is at minus uh, 8.0. It's actually 0.7976, so I'm going to round to 0 0.80. So he's 0 0.8 standard deviations below his peers below the PGA Tour uh, parameters, okay? So if we now look at the NBA, and let's use, I don't know, points per game, 
We use points per game, let's say. So let's say on average, these NBA players are making, um, let's say, 15 points per game. Okay. And again, I, I'm just making this up, but you could certainly look up this information and actually do these calculations. I'm just making this stuff up because it's fun to do that. Um, let's say, the stand, so this is average points per game for active uh, NBA players. And let's say the standard deviation in this case is, um, oh, I don't know. Let's say the standard deviation is 7.35. Okay. And then LeBron James is out here, and let's say LeBron James, uh, for his games, usually scores, let's say, 24.25 uh, points a game. That may be low for LeBron James. He's a pretty damn good player, but it doesn't matter. Let's put these numbers in. So let's do this. Let's get LeBron James's. Um, Z-score. So here we are at uh, 24.25 minus 15. We're going to divide by 7.35. So LeBron James now. Let's do this. 24.25 minus 15 divided by 7.35. And here's LeBron James at plus 1.26. Now, again, I am using this example purposefully because I want to make sure that people keep their wits about them, that you're not just doing math, that it makes sense. For the PGA, the lower you are, the better. For basketball, number of points per game, the higher you are, the better. In this case, because I have my wits about me, I'm going to disregard the negative here because negative means good here, positive means good here. So we can compare just the absolute no, uh, values here. <clears throat> if we were comparing both people with basketball, a negative would mean you're really bad. You're below average. In this case, because it's golf, negative is better. Uh, but Tiger is not as good relative to the rest of the golfers as LeBron James is good relative to the other basketball players. So LeBron James is better than Tiger Woods. And this has nothing to do with personality. It has nothing to do if these are the numbers. LeBron James is further away from average, right? I want to be far away from average as long as it's on the better side. Basketball, golf. I want to be away from the average. I don't want to be average, okay? I want to be more deviant than that. I can compare these directly. Compare these directly. I certainly can't compare 69.15 and 24.25. This is number of points in a basketball game. This is number of strokes in a, in a golf tournament. Talk about aardvarks and airplanes. I mean, there's no comparing these two. You just can't do it. What I'm really comparing is positions on the curve. I'm comparing positions on the curve. LeBron James is way further away from average compared to uh, Tiger Woods. But we can still do, then, a conversion to a common curve. Now, again, if you are getting it with z-scores, you're probably wondering, why are we converting to a, to a common curve? Well, it's done very often, and I'm assuming this is what the people at ESPN do when they're trying to decide the best athlete of the year. Okay, um, so here's what we're going to do. Let's do this. We're going to put both of these athletes on a common curve. Okay. I'm just making this up 
I'm making it up. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use a mean of 100. I'm going to call this the Professional Athletics Index, the PAI. I just made that up, okay? I'm going to make 100 the average. Now, I'm doing that for a reason. Because we can put LeBron James on here. We can put Tiger Woods on here. But we can also put... Um, is the best of the baseball player Mike Judge? I don't know. I, I'm not a big sports guy, I must say. But we can put soccer players on here, swimmers on here, um, uh, bobsledders on here, uh, long jumpers on here, you know, whatever you want, because we can get their Z scores if we compare them to the peers. Okay? And so I'm going to make so if you're an average athlete, you would have a PAI score of 100. That's why I chose 100. It's arbitrary, but I just decided to make it 100 because then, you know, if people get used to this measure, they're going to say, okay, average athletes are 100. If you're above 100, you're better than average. If you're below 100, you're worse than average. Um, and then I'm just going to make up, so let's do 20. Or, I don't know, just because I used 10 before. It doesn't matter. It's a common curve. So we're going to put Tiger Woods on there. So Tiger Woods is at 0 0.80. In this case, this is not always what you want to do, but in this case, I'm going to disregard the negative because I want better athletes to be above 100. Okay? I want better athletes to be above 100. This is how far better than average Tiger Woods is. And then I'm going to say, okay, what would Tiger Woods' score be here? This is just my z-score formula. Okay. And so uh, let's do this. Uh, let me see. Eight, this would be 16. I'm multiplying 20 by 0.8, right? 16 uh, would be equal to x minus 100, so that means x must be 116, right? So here is Tiger Woods at 116, okay? I take Tiger Woods' performance in a PGA. I want to convert it to here. So this is the key here. This is the position where Tiger Woods is at. No matter what curve I would put Tiger Woods on, this would be the position. And then LeBron James would be 1.26x one, 1. minus 100 over 20. Well, now I'm going to have to use my calculator here. What's 20 times 1.26? 25 25.2. So here's LeBron James at 125.2. So let me say this slowly. LeBron James scoring 24.25 in the NBA is the same position as 125.2 on this curve. They both have a z-score of 1.26. Tiger Woods. Scoring 69.15 in a golf tournament, where this is the mean and this is the standard deviation, would put him this far away from the mean. Again, lower scores are better. I want to show him better than the average here. And so, professional athletic index for Tiger Woods is 116. For LeBron James is 125.2. And I could put swimmers on here, long jumpers. Uh, baseball players, wrestlers, soccer players, whatever. As long as I have their z-score for where they are in their own sport, I can then convert it to this common curve. These are sometimes called standard scores, z-scores, and then people put them on a standard curve. By the way, we're not overly complicating things. This is complex, 
And if you took the SATs, or if you take the GREs, or if you take the MCATs, or the LSAT, any of these, you know, um, standardized exams, these national standardized exams, when you get your score, so I mean, I took the SATs, I'm assuming a couple of you took the SATs, maybe most of you, I don't know, but we can compare scores. So I'll say my score, and you say your score, and we can say, oh, you did better than me, I did better than you. But remember, folks, every time people sit down to take that exam, there's a different mean, there's a different standard deviation. So how would you take that into account? It's not going to be as dramatic as the astrophysicist and the basket weaver, but it's absolutely every time the exam is given, there's a different mean and standard deviation. So how can we then compare scores one to another? Doesn't that give us a problem just like the basket weaver and the astrophysicist? Well... Believe it or not, you take the SATs in 2018. I took the SATs oh, a lot longer ago than that, back in the 1980s. Okay, We can compare scores because what the educational testing um, service does, they, take the, they get the mean, they get the standard deviation, they get your score. They calculate the Z-score. Then they put that onto a common curve. Then they put that onto a common curve. So it's just like comparing Tiger Woods' 116 to LeBron James' 125.2, right? These don't represent anything about golf or basketball. What we've done is we've taken the positions and put them on a common curve so I can compare these. I remember when I was taking this course, for some reason, I sort of got what the z-scores were about. And it's like, oh, I got here, I got here. Why do we need to do this extra step? That's a great question. It's a great question. It's commonly done. It's commonly done. But if people knew z-scores, you wouldn't have to do this additional step. But it's done a lot, okay? So whether you're going to compare z-scores or then convert that to a common curve, this is how we can compare Aardvarks and airplanes, or apples and oranges, or astrophysicists and basket weavers, or golf players and basketball players. And I guarantee you, this is the kind of stuff that goes on at ESPN when they're trying to arrive at who's the best athlete. If we were trying to decide who the best college graduate was, instead of just looking at GPA, instead of just looking at GPA, I would convert everything to z-scores because you could have a valedictorian that took every easy teacher in every easy class and got all A's and someone who has a GPA of 3.75 but they took all the hard courses and all the hard professors. I don't think that's fair. That's how the system works now. If we converted everything to z-scores, it would be much fairer. Then you say, why don't we do that? The question is, excuse me, it's a good question. I think one of the reasons we don't do that is because people fear statistics. Even though it would make things fairer, people are afraid of statistics. And, and when you call something a z-score, it sounds much more mysterious than it is. What does the z-score tell you? What does this tell you? tells you how many standard deviations away from the mean you are. Okay, next video we'll talk about how we can convert these to percentiles. Then we're really in good shape with talking about people's position on a curve and what that means in terms of how many people did better than you or worse than you and so on and so forth. Um, so we'll take that up in the next uh, video.